Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be looking at some chrome blob uh, effects which we can make in Blender very quickly. This is a beginner's tutorial so um, stick along for this and hopefully you can follow along very easily. Um, so the first thing we've done is I'm going to put a bit of b-roll over this, this footage here is I've just gone and illustrated some really easy graphics. Um, they have no flow, they're just like these blobby lines almost and what they allow us to do is then take these through into Blender and smooth them out and they should really work with um, the chrome effect we're going to be applying to them later on. So uh, as you can see uh, I have imported them into Illustrator and you can see there's loads here and I've just selected my favorites. I've pasted them over into a new document and then I have gone to file, export, export as and I've saved them, my favorites as an SVG. That is really important um, project file you need to save it as. Save it somewhere safe and then we're gonna hop over to Blender right now, which I have conveniently done, ready to go. So um, yeah, here are, they are imported into Blender. To get them imported into Blender as an SVG, you need to go to File, Import, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, and that should allow you to then paste and bring them straight through into the program. And what I've done is I've grabbed them all and I've scale them up to the scale so uh, this is what they previous looked like scale wise and I'm just going to scale them just slightly so we can see them easier okay so then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to these have come through as separate uh, pieces as separate curve objects so what we need to do is group them so as you can see in my collection folder over here they will come through uh, in separate collections which is completely fine um, so we'll work on the first one which can be this one here and I'm just going to move this to the middle. Alright, I'm going to highlight all of these and select one and press Ctrl J. That will join all of these uh, curve objects together. And I'm going to go to Objects, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry as well. So that's going to give the center point to this uh, piece graphic here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go down to is to geometry on the curve sections and we're just going to go to extrude and tap the extrude a couple times. What I'm going to do is extrude it by 0 0.01 um, because I think that is perfect because we want um, almost the idea of when we smooth these corners, it doesn't want to come across like there's going to be a flat line. So I might even go a bit s smaller than that. So if we go to 0 0.05005. 0 .005, that's going to look cool because when it curves over, we want the radius to curve into. Um, we basically want to create effect. I'll just show it now and add it. Want to create an effect of this rather than the graphic we had before would do something like this and then this, which is fine. But you can see we get this straight line here, which we're not looking for. So we're going to make it 0.0005. There Okay, so what we're going to do, highlight again, and we're just going to remove this material, this SVG material, which will come through from Illustrator. And then we are going to um, basically convert this into a into a mesh. So we're going to go, we're going to right click, go to convert, convert to mesh. And that, if you press tab, you can see it's converted into a mesh, which is perfect. However, there is a big problem with this mesh and the problem is, is we have all these horrible edges and vertices where they all meet, which is not good for, for um, what we intend to do. So we need to remesh the, the graphic. So we're going to go to the uh, modifier section, click add modify, go down to remesh and this will happen. Don't worry, this is completely fine. And we're going to slowly, before you touch the slider, be very careful with this because this is your voxel size and the lower you go with this the more chance your computer will blow up uh, in the process of doing so. So be very careful with how much you reduce this by. I will show you whereabouts my computer uh, can kind of handle it but I'm trying to get it uh, as low as possible. So I'm going to go for something like that's there. I think that's enough for me. You can see that these are a bit smooth. Maybe we go a little bit lower. That is it. That's enough for my computer. Any lower, my computer is going to have a, 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 real, a real rough time. So we're going to right click shade smooth and we're just going to apply that remesh. And that's almost it. We've pretty much done the process of 
um, getting the asset ready, ready for our, our section where we go into this moving. So we're going to hit 7, which is the top view, and we're going to go over to the sculpt mode. And the tool I'm going to be using is the smooth tool, which is selected right here on the left hand side. Okay, so uh, my strength is set to 0.7, and my radius is going to be something like maybe 100, just to get through this as we're in a tutorial, we need to get through this pretty quick. And actually we're going to up the radius a bit more. Now basically what I'm going to do is actually before I begin smoothing, I'm going to set the Z axis on as well. So that's going to mirror on the other side. Um, so we don't have to do it on, on each side. It's going to mirror that. And I'm just going to go through and smooth this out. Now it's important for me not to smooth out too much where we start to like thin areas out and lose that size of that graphic. So I'm going to be very um, quick in terms of going through onto this. Same with this. And to be honest with you, that's pretty much sorted out you start to see areas which are thicker we can go on the side and smooth all this out that's looking good still and I think that's pretty much what we need we can also grab the grab tool um, which is here and it allows me to then grab parts of the mesh I click off that Z and it can then allow me to morph and move areas up and move areas down maybe this will add a another layer of detail when it comes to the, the, the render you can see we're just moving stuff around here so feel free to take a lot more time than, than I'm doing I'm kind of doing this quick for the for the video um, but you get the idea here we're gonna hit 7 and show the final result which is perfect and I'm just gonna quickly show you the way in which I would light this this chrome piece so we, obviously we need to make the material first so we're gonna come out of sculpt mode we're going to go to the material section, click new. We're going to go down to where it says metallic, set metallic to full. And we're going to reduce the roughness to something like very, very close to being fully roughness off. So something like that there. We're going to go into the render properties, go into make sure in cycles, set the device to GPU. And I'm going to hit a quick save before I show anything. I'm going to make my max samples to 200 in the render and I think that's everything apart from installing the, the lighting. So as you can see, we're gonna go into the render view and we're not gonna be able to see much. We're not gonna be able to see the, the crow material. Obviously make sure this is shade smooth as well. So we're gonna to go to the back to the render properties, go down to film, and we're gonna make this sure that this is set to transparent. This will allow us to export this graphic with a transparent background. And I'm just gonna bring in a light. So I'm gonna bring in an area light. Uh, which you can see there. I'm going to make sure this is, I think I might have grabbed the wrong one. Here I did. I'm going to then move this up. And as you can see, we're starting to see some chrome effects. And I'm also going to add a plane to the bottom of this. So I'm going to press three and just put it so it's where it's just touching that lower piece. In fact, the way I've modeled it, I'm going to move it up to it just touches this predominantly this, this part here. The reason I've done that is because this doesn't really matter and there's more surface on this bottom piece here which would make more sense from a top view. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool already. There's a few more steps we want to take to um, get this set up. Um, what I'm going to be doing here is going to select the area light. I'm going to try going to the visibility and uh, I'm going to go to where it says Ray visibility, I'm going to select this to glossy and turn this off. I just want to see what that's going to be doing. And I'm not so keen on what that's up to, so I'm going to leave that on there for a second. And I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to hit 7, and I'm going to start positioning and rotating. So I'm basically pressing G to move, and I'm pressing R, Y, and then R, X. I'm just rotating the area light to get something cool. While we're from this top view as well, we're just going to also grab a camera and the camera allow, because we're in the top view, it should have already spawned on this axis. I'm going to press N, view, camera to viewport and zoom out. As you can see, it's already above the, the, the uh, graphic, which is perfect. And we're going to change the size and resolution to 1920 by 1920 just to get that square format. I'm holding control and hold the middle mouse click and zooming in to do that there and let's say we go with something like this 
Okay, so the lighting does need a lot of improvement. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up this environment here, or maybe we'll leave it quite low actually, and work with the area lights. We will grab another area light. That's a mesh light again, and I'm just going to move this up. Hit zero, working as a bit of a top view here. And you can really play around with how much reflection you want in this thing. I almost don't want it to be overexposed. Um, so I'm going to grab another area light again. Move this up. And maybe I'm going to add a bit of a color to the chrome uh, by just upping the roughness slightly. There we go. It's looking pretty cool. It's pretty white from this side. So I'm just going to drop this power from here slightly. And then we're going to select this top light. And I'm just going to position it. Let's say we position it here. No, we're not. We're going to remove it. Let's get that top view again. And then maybe we scale up. Uh, let's delete you. Let's try that. I'll grab you. Rotate it. And then delete that. And there we go. Maybe this is pretty cool. Maybe this is what we're going for. That was a very rushed attempt. Um, and I've removed the, the base layer. So we can maybe if we put a darker material on the back there, that should allow that to breathe a bit better. Um, drop the roughness of the metallic. And maybe we put a little bit of color on there. Something like that. Okay, this is causing a lot of problem on here because of that, that white light. And also is this one to be honest. So, there is other options of lighting. What we could do is import an, a, a HDRI into this environment and we can give that a go. So maybe that's something uh, we could tr uh, trial out here. So we delete everything, go into the environment, click color, go to environment texture. And what this will do is we'll open up here and we can then open a um, and import a HDRI. So this will be found in the link description below and it will allow you to import a, a 360 degree uh, image which will project the light onto your graphic, onto your 3D mesh. Um, so yeah, that's a, an option there. I'll actually see if I can, I might need to hide my screen. Um, <clears throat> let me find a, a EXR. I'm just gonna install something like this. So I've just grabbed one here. I will leave the one I'm using, the Studio Small. You can find that on the website, I'll find below. Um, and if we go into shading, and we then go to, we close these, give me two seconds. We go into the shader options, we go to world, and I'm just gonna grab this here and press Control T. This is with Node Wrangler, so make sure that's um, set up in your environment, in your, sorry, in your, uh, add-ons we're going to click render and we can just change the rotation on the z and this will create a different effect on the you're basically rotating the image so maybe you wanted to animate this uh, that would add some variation in your lighting you can then also change this here to get something cool i'm not liking that white light this is a very metallic um, graphic anyway so it's difficult not to get something like that um, so I'm gonna settle with this for now I'll do that that white light on the top there is very bright okay I think I'm gonna settle with that um, so there we go guys hopefully this has helped you out making some cool um, chrome graphics um, if it has make sure to like the video and um, subscribe as well because we are really um, we are really uh, starting to pick the pace up on the channel, so I appreciate everyone who's been subscribing recently. Um, you got, you guys are great. I appreciate everything, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the video. Um, peace.